Okay, Juliet Frate is back. But I mean, she she goes through and she says, is feminism dead? Thoughts on MRAs? We're probably just going to go through the feminist part because the video gets a little bit long here. Not that I mind watching her videos, <laughs> if you know what I mean. She's got her war paint on today thick, so let's go. Hi, friend. Hi. Today I'd like to ponder the question, is feminism dead? It should be. You, you've, you've won. I mean, why, why is it so difficult for feminists or women and men who identify as feminists to accept victory? Well, why is this so hard? You got it. You, you won. You got everything you wanted. Equal rights, voting, all this abortions. You've got equal opportunity in this country. It, it makes no sense to normal people who we look around and we say, oh, women are so oppressed. Really? Where? Where, where are these oppressed women? Oh, well, in the Middle East. Well, yeah, in the Middle East, sure. Not in the United States. If feminism is concerned about women in the Middle East, maybe they should uh, set up shop there. That would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Many of you might think that, yes, it is, and maybe that it should be, and that maybe it never was what you wanted it to be. It's exactly what it uh, was supposed to be. It has just morphed over the last 10, 15 years into something cancerous. Because the mask has come off, Juliet. We all know what it's all about. It's not about women's rights anymore. It's about socialism. It's about equal outcome. It's about, I can take a gender studies degree. I should get paid the same as a doctor uh, because I have a degree. I mean, and crap like that. And and Bernie, yeah, we get a free college and uh, Medicare for all. And, and I'm going to come to your house and give you free cheese and, and minimum uh, minimum income. And, uh, you know, it's, it's only fair because them rich people, you know... Uh, or whatever he says. And of course, the rest of the Democrats are lying. No, 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 no. Hey, Bernie's got free shit, but I've got even more free shit. Yeah. So it's always been about socialism, communism, but the mask is off. So, I mean, at least, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a little more tolerable that they're actually coming out and saying what they've always meant. We want equal outcome. Well, yeah. I personally, as many of you know, um, have been a feminist for quite some time. Who hurt you, Juliet? Who was it? However, the, today, the feminist of today is a lot different than the feminist of even a decade ago or the decade before that. You know, it, it was maybe 20, 25 years ago when all this political correctness, men and women would laugh about this stuff. It's like, hey, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I'm sorry. That isn't politically correct. She'd laugh. We'd laugh. Everybody'd have a laugh. Now... If you misgender somebody, they want you in frickin' prison. This is becoming insane, Juliet. And you would be insane to continue to call yourself a feminist. Not to say that these ideas that they currently have that are quite radical don't have root in older ideologies as they do. Okay. First wave feminism, want the right to vote. Second wave feminism, we want the right to f every guy we want to without having to worry about getting pregnant. Let's get some abortions. Let's get some pills in here. We want equal pay. We want equal rights, equal opportunity and all. You've got it. So what? what, what is feminism fighting for today? Except maybe abortion. I can understand that point of view. You believe abortion is not. Okay, great. That, that's a fight. Well, what, 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 what about the rest? The wage gap? Sexist air conditioning? Tampon tax? You know, pink tax? I mean, what? Uh, come on. But the old school feminist is really about equality. Funny, they weren't about signing up for the draft, however, when they got the right to vote. See, that's a completely different thing. Equal Rights Amendment. Yeah, we need the Equal Rights Amendment. Except it would have uh, removed all of the privileges that females enjoy, even up and including today. Yet they're still complaining. I want an equal right. Why would you want something like that, which would remove special treatment toward women? But you do. Oh my God, it's uh... not about female supremacy. <laughs> oh God, that was funny. Not about putting down men, mm. not about man hating. In fact, most feminist progress, if not all feminist progress that has ever been accomplished in this world has been done so with the help of men. And it would not have been possible without the help of men who are sympathetic to women's needs. Men just got tired of women bitching all the time. Got tired of listening to it. It's like, okay, I, no, no fault. Of, okay, God, sign the freaking thing. No, you got it. Hey, birth control pill. Here, abortion. Yes, just shut up. And yet you're still not shutting up. Um, this includes the right to vote, reproductive rights. The list goes on. What about male reproductive rights? And what about that equality you uh, speak of, Juliet? Are you going to stand up for, th th oh, no, no. See, that's different because all men are privileged. And if they had sex, well, that's their f 
problem. They shouldn't have had it. <laughs> and a true feminist, a real feminist. Oh, God. We're getting into no true Scotsman territory now. Is someone who likes men. Ah. And I don't believe that those who dislike men, the angry man-hating lesbian feminists, for example, if we're going to choose a caricature. It's not a caricature. It's actually real. Back in the 60s and early 70s, there was a movement of lesbian feminists who actually did terrorism and stuff. I don't believe they're real feminists. Uh, no true Scotsman has sugar on his part. They're hijacking the name because you can't be about equality if you hate half the population. You can't be about equality if you do not stand up for fundamental rights that men do not have with respect to women, such as fundamental reproductive rights. Men cannot opt out of becoming a father if he doesn't want to become a father. Women, on the other hand, can opt out of becoming a mother. I see some inequality there, Juliet. Uh, are we going to address that? Has any feminist mentioned that at some point? No. It's impossible. So now what do we do with the idea that there's some very radical and rather hateful ideologies that are actually quite sexist against men? And women. If you do not agree with the hive mind, you are a non-person, according to feminists. Especially if you're pro-life or you want to be a housewife or you don't buy into all the feminist bullshit, you're unpersoned, Juliet. So it's not just against men here. It's against other women who do not. But which is about 80% of the entire country is unpersoned. Think about that. And quite authoritarian in the new rules around dating um, and consent in the sense that now flirtation is being criminalized. If he is not up to her standard of attractiveness, or if she doesn't find him hot, then it should be a crime. But if he's hot, he's just a little aggressive and I like it. And if you want to learn more about this, you can go ahead and watch my video about how Me Too failed. I'll uh, link that below. Thank you, Juliet, for doing that. So, but, but considering where feminism is going or where those who have hijacked feminism are taking it, can we think that maybe feminism is dying or is dead? Is it possible to resurrect the old intention, the, the joyful equality intention, the... Uh, the intention that appreciated men and women for who they were, though different. Which wave of feminism was that? Okay, Juliet, here's the thing. Feminism has always been about socialism. If you're not familiar with the Frankfurt School and then the New School, or John Dewey, or the Seneca Falls Conference, 1848, etc., it's always been about socialism, or Marxism, or communism, or some kind of equal outcome. We have feminism complaining that there aren't enough women in STEM. Okay, fair enough. So we set up all these programs to get more women into STEM. What is not happening? They're not taking STEM. Yet, somewhere along the way, the patriarchy is being blamed for that. Why didn't you take STEM? Well, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to take English literature. Okay, but what's the problem? The English lit major doesn't make the same money as an engineer. Thus, the earnings gap. It's not fair. That's what it's been about, Julia. Now, was there some, at some point in the past where women didn't, yeah, sure, you know, they didn't have the right to vote and whatever. But you'll notice the first waivers uh, didn't get in line to sign up for selective service, the draft. No woman has ever been drafted in the United States, ever. And yet here we have an obvious inequality. Men are forced to sign up for selective service, women are not. Now that's been called unconstitutional. What do you think the feminists are going to do? Yes, we need to sign up for selective service. We need to do our part. It's only fair. No, of course not. They're going to have the draft removed. <laughs> so they don't have to sign up for it because they know there's a consequence. Not only just dying, but, uh, you know, student loans, all kinds of other stuff. Let me give you an example of why I think feminism is dead. So let's say, Juliet, you know, we're talking uh, on Twitter or something, right? It's like, hey, Juliet, I'm going to have a... Um, I'm going to have a protest downtown at the courthouse on Saturday. Would you, would you like to join in? And you might say, yeah, yeah, I haven't been to a protest for what are we going to protest? We're going to protest war. And you say, sure, yeah, I don't like war. Nobody likes war. It sucks. Yeah, I don't want people to die and everything. So meet me down there, you know, 9 o'clock at the courthouse. Great, great. So we get down there. And Juliet says, hey, uh, hamster, uh, do you have a sign for me? I go, oh, yeah, we got signs over here already made up. You can just carry one. This is going to be great. And you pick the sign up, Juliet, and it says... End the Vietnam War. And you might say to yourself, uh, we haven't been in Vietnam since 1975. So why would I want to carry a end the Vietnam War sign when the war doesn't exist? And I might say to you, 
well, I said it was about war, but, you know, it's, it's about the Vietnam War. And you might look at me and say, uh, Hamster, uh, are you on your meds? Uh, we haven't been in Vietnam for 45 years. So I think that one's kind of over. You know, if we want to talk about Iraq War, Iran War, some of the other wars we're in, you know, we could talk about that. I mean, that's legitimate, but Vietnam, you know, it, it's over. It's done. And yet I would say, but we need to get our troops out of Vietnam. It's a horrible situation. And you'd be looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with you? You might not say that, but you think it in your mind. So when you say women are oppressed, women don't have equal rights, the pay gap, the wage gap, or whatever, uh, blah, 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 blah. That was decades ago, literally decades ago. And yet feminism is still complaining about the same shit that has been fixed for decades. Men heard the wailing and gnashing of teeth and the wow, we're so oppressed and blah, blah, blah. So the men in charge changed the laws. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's not fair. We did this already. It's done. So the only conclusion I can come to, Juliet, is the feminists of today or you know, last 10, 15, 20 years. It's only about socialism. It's about equal outcome. For you see, Juliet, when you hear the patriarchy, we must smash the patriarchy. What you need to do is translate that into we need to smash capitalism. James Maxwell, thank you for listening.